Did you know there's a first build in Mexico? Well, there is, and our friends from First Build in Mexico are gonna come here this week. They are working on a new beer brewing prototype, and we are gonna brew some beer with it. So let's check it out. We don't have any experience brewing beer. I, in fact, I think there might be one employee here that does. Uh, we don't know what we're doing. So we bought a kit like you can get on Amazon, and we're gonna brew some Irish stout using the, uh, I don't know, the kit method. The reason we're doing this is we wanna get a little bit of ex experience with a kit before we use their prototype and see what the benefits of the prototype actually are. Otherwise, we'd have no clue if it was good or bad or, or anything in between. So some things I thought about this process as I, we went through this kit are, there's a lot of sanitization. Uh, I guess I kinda knew that, but I didn't realize how important it was. I mean, we had to sanitize everything and it felt like we were putting things in chemicals and I don't know, we were sanitizing everything. It's like a grain sausage. <laughs> um, another one is there was a lot of closely watching temperatures. Uh, so for example, 155 degrees to kind of steep the grains and then boiling and time and all these things. So it's just a, a very specific set of steps and tightly controlled temperatures that we had to watch. Um, another one is the cooling down. So after you boil the wort, and you know, for like an hour, you then have to bring it down pretty fast and it took a lot of ice. We didn't have a, a big vessel to do that, so we used the sink, it takes a lot of ice, you gotta make sure you go buy a bunch of ice. Uh, so that was a little bit tedious as well. Um, and then at the end, you know, transferring it into the vessel was a little bit difficult. And we really didn't know exactly, I didn't know where we were going, so you just kind of blindly follow the instructions. Uh, in hindsight, it wasn't that bad. The next time I do it, I'm, I would at least understand the parts, but there's definitely some pain points. Cooling it down with ice was probably the most frustrating part. Oh, having to hold the thermometer by hand instead of having that clip on. I think we could solve that, but I guess we need to go put it in a home somewhere dark and chilly. You just gotta remember that we did this. Don't forget, you'll know when it starts smelling. No one disturb. Remember this, it's in locker number five. And the thing exploded. It actually exploded and, and the, the pop, the top popped off and anyway, it was a mess. We cleaned it up and uh, we were told later by some experts that visited that, you know, it was salvageable. We could recover it. So we've tried to do that. We're gonna find out how that turns out. Hey everybody, it is now day two. So yesterday we did the kit. Today we are going to look at First Build Mexico's prototype. So this is a prototype, like I mentioned. Uh, so, you know, they've, they've hacked some things together, but it should give you a good idea of where they're headed with this prototype and kind of the features that are gonna include, especially when we compare it with the kit that we used yesterday. Well, my name is Nadia. I'm an industrial designer. I work in First Build Mexico, and I'm here to show you how to brew beer in our new project. Uh, we are trying to do this process as simple uh, as possible and we need to prove that our ideas it's, uh, it's solving something for the users. So some of these prototypes is cardboard or some of them it's uh, uh, we hack some parts from other products. We call it like our Frankensteins. So, and yeah, it's very really fun at this, at this point. Oh. When this thermometer reads 180, I'm gonna put this bag of oats right in the water. Let it steep for a while. We know there are a lot of kits out there, but I wanna walk through some of the features of this prototype. This prototype targets about a two and a half gallon brew, which is kind of different than what's out there. there are, a lot of the kits are one gallon, and a lot of the sort of automated systems are five gallon. I know five gallon is the most popular in the US, but they think that two and a half gallons is really a sweet spot for experimentation and trying new things. They're targeting enabling brewing with whole grains versus like pods. You've seen some of the systems where you have to buy the proprietary pods or like mixing kits. They wanna really enable the craft brewing process, which includes whole grains or you know, malt extract if you wanted to do that, but they wanna enable whole grains. Space is another concern. Uh, they really are, are trying to design this to be nestable so that when you're not brewing, you can store it away neatly. Uh, as you see kind of some of the components, 
imagine how those might nest together to really minimize storage space. Yeah. All right, so we're gonna put our hops in. Yeah. Did you say wait? Yeah, you could give it the hot break. Yeah, because that's the over. hot break there. You see how it's coming oh, out? That's all the protein break. Right there. Another thing that we, we have seen before, but it's pretty interesting in this kit, is they've got a cooling system, so a coil and a, a tank of cool water, which is chilled with reusable ice packs uh, to quickly bring down the wort temperature when you're headed towards your fermentation, adding your yeast, all of that kind of thing. I found that Filling up a sink with ice was a little tedious. Number one, I had to go get the ice and I had to have plenty of it and it melted fast. Um, I, I kind of like this system. I, I don't have to go out to buy ice. I can actually just freeze some pods and then I've got a big tank of cold water that I'm using to cool the wort. And I could replace the, the cool water in that tank too without having to go get another bag of ice, that kind of thing. So again, they want to focus on reusability and trying to eliminate waste. So no pods, reusable nylon bag for the mash process, steeping, and uh, the ice packs are reused as well. So you're not going and buying bags of ice, throw away the plastic, that kind of thing. So again, the direction with this is the kit has everything you need. It minimizes waste and it allows you to be a part of the brewing process. You're not buying proprietary kits where you're not learning exactly how things work. They want you to become the craft brewer. So this was a very fun experience to have a first build team from Mexico come on site and teach us how to brew beer. Like We've said we've never done this before, so we are complete beginners in this process. It was eye-opening. Many things I learned about brewing beer. Craft beer is sort of an emerging market in, in Mexico where they, they live, so they're really targeting that community. Uh, it's been in the U.S. for quite a while, and I know we've got a lot of experienced craft brewers out there um, and a lot of experience. We'd love to know your feedback on this. Do you see something that really kind of piques your interest uh, that you might be interested in. They would love that feedback. We'd like to hear it too. We have a, a fairly large audience. So all of our home brewers out there, let us know what you think. What, what's maybe missing? What needs do you have that aren't currently met, if any? Um, what do you think about this whole process? Feel free to tell me how many ways I screwed up because I guarantee you I screwed up a lot of things as well. Oh, one more thing. We are going to bottle in the next couple of weeks and uh, we're gonna share an update on how the beer tastes. Uh, so stick around and maybe find out. <laughs>